Let's get to it. Today, we got a bit of class, we got a bit of business, and then we got a thing we're going to do at the end. It might be fun, it might annoy the shit out of you, we'll find out, you know. But you'll make it, either way, you'll make it. Okay. What I want to do for the first couple minutes, I want to dive into this. We were technically, according to the syllabus, supposed to do it last time, but we didn't have time because, quite honestly, you guys did such a great job uh, diving into that last dragon scene we talked about, which if you remember is bananas. Um, and honestly, I just didn't want to cut that short. I felt like it was just a really beneficial, beneficial conversation for you guys to participate in, so we just did that. Basically, I just want to do this for a couple minutes, uh, and you're a little further along than you would typically be in the process for this part, but I still think it'll help uh, for different people for, for in different places, I guess. All that is to say, a little bit of brainstorming. I'm just curious, right? So, like I pointed out, if I were in this class, if I were a student tasked with this final project, I would absolutely do The Last Dragon. I would do it all day. I would have so much fun talking about that batshit movie that I love. Um, now, I imagine you guys are thinking about different things. Most of you are probably thinking about movies, because again, that's the world we're, we're in, that's okay. But it doesn't have to be. It could be a game, TV show, book. Do you guys know we have those still? Um, <laughs> uh, I've had people do albums in the past, all kinds of things, right? So just, I just wanna get some of this stuff in the air. And again, sometimes you guys are reticent, uh, hesitant to uh, to offer whatever it is you're thinking but again it's not just for you this will help classmates uh, so anything at all would would be appreciated just go for it okay I'll be honest with you I don't think I've ever had anybody do Spongebob before this was a project this used to be our final paper never had anybody do Spongebob okay which which if you just a brief rundown the episode where he's trying to get into the salty spittoon. The salty spittoon? Okay, I'm not familiar. Oh, but. well, um, it's like a sailor club. Or okay, okay, okay. And they're kind of stereotypically... Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so Sandy gets married because of this. Who's Sandy? His girlfriend. Okay. Oh, is it his squirrel friend? Like, it's his girlfriend? Squirrel. Because that'd be a missed opportunity. Okay, no. that's fine. You, it's his friend, but she's squirrel. Okay. We're not putting labels on this. Um, okay. That sounds rife. And yes, yeah, Safan, you seem to get a couple of memories from people, so that's interesting. What are you thinking about, like, again, just like a sentence or two, what are you thinking about in terms of the project with SpongeBob? Like, why, when, when you, I guess, read the prompt, maybe, why did this episode leap to mind? That's a start, that's a start, okay, okay. Fair enough, and to be fair, I'll put you on the spot a little bit. Ideally, you'll go further than that in your project, but but okay, okay, good enough. Other texts you guys are kicking around? Home Alone. Home Alone? Yeah, I've had people do that before. Probably not for the project, but back when it was a paper, I've had people do it. It's weirdly super similar to Die Hard. Yeah, I, like that's what kind of reminded me of it, because yeah. it's like kind of but yeah. also when you think about it, the only thing that's Christmas is like the background, like it's like snowing. Like, I would disagree. I, I, I think mean, it's a Christmas movie. There is, yes, it is a Christmas movie. Okay. But, but it, because I bring, it's got a similar conversation around it that Die Hard has. Some people are like, well, it's definitely Christmas. And other people are like, well, no. It, it's about pseudo murder. Like, I've read articles before where people count how many times uh, the robber guys would probably be fatally injured trying to enter the house, and it's a high number. Um, so Ken, this like 12 year old is just killing dudes, like at Christmas. Um, but again, it's all about the family, right? It's all about bringing them back. Uh, you absolutely, uh, cause I know more about this than SpongeBob, unfortunately. Uh, I was too old for that, I think. But you absolutely get this idea of, like he even says at one point, uh, he calls himself the man of the house. He has to protect it. And he has to shave, and he's like shaving his face and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he doesn't know how to do it. No. Um, clearly, I can study up too. Um, yeah, and he's got the stupid BB gun and the and he's setting traps, which is not altogether 
dissimilar from how McLean does it, right? I mean, granted, different uh, sort of execution, I guess. But he sort of, <clears throat> a, a lot of what he deals with outside of questions about family and class, by the way, Kevin is very well off. I don't know, it, you may not pick this up, pick up on this when you watch a movie when you're a kid. You go back and watch it, it's a nice fucking house they're in. They're like 10 bucks. And there's million. a lot of kids. Yeah, so. that costs money. I don't know what the parents do, but it works out for them. But anyway, um, where was I going with that? Oh, but no, it's, it's this idea, like what he thinks a man is supposed to be, right? And how that works maybe in terms of family and or class, right? And, uh, and you can see that play out, and he tries to figure it out with the, the shaving and the, everything else, and he finds out that he's often wrong uh, in some way. So yeah, for sure, for sure, all along. Mostly the first and or second one, but after the later ones are, are travesties. Two's fine, but anyway, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, can we get a couple more if you guys don't mind? Central intelligence? Central intelligence? What on earth is that? <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. I, I have assumptions given the casting, but I, I've been wrong before. Is it like uh, The Rock is, he, he, he just plays himself basically? No, 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 it's like um, he's in high school. Who? Uh, the Rock is, is like a fat chubby kid in high school. Okay. And he grows up. To be like, The Rock. Uh, the Rock, right? Right. And Kevin Hart was like a cool guy in high school. Ah. And he met, he met him. And he saw him as the rock, and he, he was like assuming that he would be like still the cool guy, like will be a cool guy now. Right. Oh, but he's nerdy. Like he's, but he's like still, you know, a lame kid. Okay. His whole body. Okay. Yeah. So obviously thinking about uh, sort of perception versus reality and why. Mm -hmm. The question, by the way, for all of you, no matter what you choose, is going to be why. Why? Um, in your case, why does that narrative resonate? Because I think it does, right? Like, why why do we watch a film like that and we come away thinking that some of the points it makes make sense, right? Because it's tapping into something. Again, some stereotypical assumptions we have or some like values that we hold that we maybe don't even say out loud. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Cool, I like that. Okay. That's yes, a good question. Go like, for does it. Does the movie or like the movie or whatever have to be like, based on a certain time period, or it doesn't matter? It doesn't have to be. Uh, I can give you an example, too. Yeah, go for it. So basically, I wanted to compare the one to Die Hard and how the one picks up, um, like, the father role and how... Yeah. Like, so you know how we compared, like, for Holly and um, McLean, they had mm -hmm. partnership rather than, yeah. you know, him yeah. being, like, the man of the house? So basically, yeah. Holly was picking up you know, more of a role in her family, and that's what Milan was also doing? Yeah. Kind of? Well, or no? No, well, a couple things. Number one, and again, this is part of why I'm glad you guys bring this up. What I would not do is even worry about Die Hard. Just talk about your text. You got plenty to deal with with whatever you choose. You got plenty. So just do, uh, real quick, the newer one or the... Um, probably the cartoon. Okay, I don't know. I haven't seen the newer one, but... um. I've had people write about the uh, the animated one in the past, um, and I mean, I've seen it, but it's been a long time. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot to think about in that movie. Uh, you, one thing you do have to grapple with, you mentioned uh, like the time depicted. So a period piece like that, which is what that is, is gonna be doing two things at once. Absolutely, it's going to still be evocative of its own time. Whenever the original Mulan came out, I was a kid, so I'm gonna say 90s. Um, it's gonna have 90s values throughout. And it was a big deal, like apparently, I didn't know this at the time, but like Mike Pence, some of you might have heard of him, wrote an article at the time. He was, I think he was Indiana's governor at the time or something like that, wrote an article that got a lot of press at the time talking about how Mulan, the original, was like a secret, uh, it was trying to basically like unconsciously argue for women's right to be in the military, because they weren't. And like, yeah, maybe, but also it could just be a cartoon for kids. And it, but it, I mean, it's based on an actual Chinese like, you know, legend. Like it's not, they didn't just pull it out of their ass. So 
So people care is the point I'm making. When it came out, it's absolutely part of the conversation that was going on in society, right? And you can talk about that. Uh, but it's also set in, I don't even know what century China. You could probably find out, but uh, uh, I don't know, wild guess, 12th century China, like fucking a long time ago. So you gotta, you, you just have to keep that in the back of your mind. Like what I wouldn't want you to say because uh, I've had people make this mistake before, is like, clearly in the 90s when Mulan came out, women were second class citizens that weren't allowed to like da 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 da. Like that could be true to a point, but you can't look at a depiction of, again, wild guess, 13th century China or whatever it is and say, well, that's how the 90s were. It's like, no, mother, it's 13th century China. It's very different, right? Uh, and I hate to stress it like that, but I've seen people make that really weird mistake um, so it's, it's just something you have to navigate, basically. Um, and there's absolutely times, again, that the movie is very clearly dealing with tropes, stereotypes. I mean, one question you can consider that's interesting is like, it's worth thinking about the ways that this depiction of, I'm gonna stop giving a century that probably is inaccurate, uh, but it's interesting that like, this depiction of feudal China still resonates with 90s America. Like that would suggest that there are ways in which maybe we're not so different, right? Um, so yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, but yeah, and again, this goes for anybody. Leave Die Hard behind, don't even worry about it. I mean, if it helps you start your project, think about it, cool. After that, leave it behind. Talk to me about your text. You got plenty to deal with there. Don't even bother with, with what we did in class, okay? This is about you and your text and whatever it is you're thinking. Cool. What time is it, by the way? Oh, God. Let's do one more. Oh, uh, yeah, they're in the back. Ray likes to do shows, right? Yeah. Okay. Which one are you thinking of? Uh, Bojack Horseman. I've heard of it. I have not seen it. Awesome. Well, I've heard good things. Again, yeah, I think that... Trigger warning for everything. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know really anything. I know it's apparently crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's, it's Adult Swim, right? Uh, Netflix. Netflix. Ah, okay. Well, it's, it's that genre, I guess. Anyway, um, okay, yeah, I mean, I don't know anything about the show, sorry. It would be in particular for two episodes, which would be okay. The Old Sugarman Place and Time's okay. Arrow. Time's Arrow, okay, that's a very famous novel, by the way. Um, okay, well, one thing I can say, and it's, I don't know if I said this out loud or not, but I'm glad you did this already. At most, if you do a, a TV show, two episodes. Okay, at most. Any more than that, you're just gonna end up talking about the show to me. You're not gonna, so you need focus. But two shows is great, uh, two episodes, sorry. It's great. Um, yeah, uh, if you could give us just a little bit of like, again, sort of what I asked Maria, I wanna put her on the spot. What, uh, why, I guess? Like, why did you choose those episodes? There's a particular character that's supposed to be representative of masculinity in those two episodes. Okay. Specifically of like a 50s-ish time period. Mm -hmm. Which is, is Joseph Sherman. Mm -hmm. And there's, a, there's an particular line where his wife is experiencing some negative emotions where he says, as a modern American man, I'm inequipped to handle women's emotions, so I'm going to leave. Okay, so it's like super overt about it. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, it's funny too, like I heard a little chuckle, like it's also meant as a joke, so like there's there's some truth to what he's saying, but it also the way that it's done is, for lack of a better description, a little bit crazy, right? Like, yeah, yeah, okay, well, that could work, and yeah, and they're all animals or something? Is it? Yeah, demon. There's okay. like anthropomorphic animals. There you go, okay, okay. Okay, yeah, that sounds great. I don't think I've ever, I might have had one person do that before. Anyway, all right. So again, the point to this was, no matter where you're at in the process, I hope you're at least somewhat far along, because it's due soonish, I think. Let me see, hold on. Surely I have that written down. When is it due? Oh, the third. It's due the third of May. Now, I don't know when that is. Next Tuesday? Oh, so we got a week. You're good. Coming up, I want to make sure I don't forget this. If you haven't turned in a proposal, you should do that. I believe it's due. I think it's due this morning. It's due today. Okay. 
Um, you have a rough draft due for Thursday. I just want to cover what that is because sometimes it's unclear to people. When you turn in your project, whether it's video or audio only, that's up to you. Core stand isn't the best. Um, and as a result of that, some of you will struggle with, we, with what we are generously going to describe as technology, okay, when it comes to course in. Uh, all the rough draft is meant to be is you submit a file. Could it be a rough draft of your project if you want it to be? Sure. If that helps you, do that. That's cool. Um, but, like, if you're going to submit a video, try to figure out how to submit a video to the rough draft. If you're going to do audio only, you get it. Um, but I'll tell you this because Corsten really struggles accepting video files. I'm gonna tell you to just not do it. Uh, the order of operations is upload your video to YouTube. Once it's uploaded, get the link to that video, copy that into a document, upload that to Corsten. That's what you do for video. Audio only Corsten will take because the files are just much smaller. So that's a little easier. But that's up to you. I just want that's all the rough draft assignment is because some of you will have problems with the technology, and I just want you to have them now, as opposed to when you go to turn it in, because then you'll start flipping the fuck out. Right. Okay. Questions about any of that? Because we're gonna move on to the next portion of our program. Yes. Sir. Can you cut up the video. Like, can you edit it? Like, cut it up into like three parts. This guy. Um, to, to try to get around the, yeah. um, I, maybe, <laughs> I would tell you honestly with what you're suggesting, still in my experience, it will save you the heartache probably to just upload it to YouTube, right? Um, and again, some of you may not want to upload it to YouTube. Some of you may want it to not be public. That's fine. Uh, YouTube has that option. Public is obviously an option. You cannot do private. That means no one can see it. But if you do a thing called unlisted when you upload it, what that means is it will not show up on YouTube. Someone has to have the link to see it. And of course, you will give that to me, or you should. Um, so if you're worried about that, make it unlisted, and then you're you're good. Um, but that other thing, I I would I would advise against that personally. Of course, it's a piece of shit. Just saying. All right. Now. What we're going to do next is, uh, there's no not weird way to do it, so let's just dive right in. We're going to talk about course evals. Um, <clears throat> traditionally, I would have had a manila envelope with forms, and I would have handed that to a person, and I would have walked out of the room. I am going to leave. I don't want anybody doing them right now, but anyway, and, and that would have happened, and then you'd collect the forms and seal it and write your name on the flap like a spy. Um, now it's all on course did, which we just mentioned is kind of shitty, but it's great for this. Many of you, I hope, have seen course eval kind of blaring at you at the top of the page. I think it's big and red. It's pretty hard to miss. Um, we're going to do those here in a minute. Okay. Go for it. I did mine yesterday. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Most people haven't. Like, damn near everybody. But... But that's cool, that's cool. Um, you, you, you're gonna have some spare time here in a minute, I guess. Unless it lets you do it again, that'd be interesting. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so real quick, here's, here's basically what we're gonna do. Um, I'm going to talk at you for a few moments about things, okay? I'm going to ask that you do the eval, it is optional. And I'm gonna walk out there, and I'm gonna not be in the room when you do it. One, because that'd be awkward. But two, uh, because I don't think I'm supposed to be. Anyway, so here's the things I'm gonna talk to you about first. Uh, again, the eval is optional. So here in a minute, when I leave and I give you time and space to do it, if you don't want to do it, you do not have to, okay? It is not required. The other thing I wanna make sure you know, it's anonymous. I do, your teachers do get to see these eventually, but it's well after the semester, and unless you fuck around and put your name on it, which does happen, uh, it's anonymous. It's always very fun for me when someone puts their name on it. It's so it's it's pretty funny because um, you know they don't they they it's their heart's in a good place. But uh, come on. Anyway, about evals though, I'm a big fan of telling you guys 
things I wish had been told to me when I was a student, right? Admittedly, it's been a minute since I was a student now. I've been teaching for a long time. I know it may not appear so, but that's the case. But I was also a student for a long time. So I do recall just looking back like, God, I really screwed that up. And here's kind of what that is. <clears throat> Most of the classes I had, I'm not going to say all of them. That's not how the world works. But damn near every class I had, there was something about it I enjoyed or appreciated. Usually, it came down to the question of whether or not I felt like I'd had like a thought I never would have had otherwise. Do you know what I mean? Like, and again, I'm talking about our class, but this goes for all your classes. Even if, if a lot of them is just straight lecture and half the time you're just trying not to fall asleep. If once or twice in the semester you've been struck by something as a result of like work you've done for that class or sitting in, in that lecture trying not to pass out, if you've had a thought run through your brain and then later on you're like, there's no way I would have arrived at, uh, would have arrived at that on my own, right? That, I personally feel like that class has a value. It has added something to your life, however brief, right? Um, we normally talk about that as knowledge, but I'd, I'd, I'd go broader. I'd just say entertaining thoughts. Like just trying on ideas. You might disagree with them by the end. That's fine, but you're trying it on, right? Like I, I think that's valuable, personally. And I say all that to say, that was my experience by and large as a student, and I never told any of my teachers any of that. I stupidly, naively assumed that most feedback teachers got was something along those lines, right? And look, to be fair, the way evals are worded kind of tends toward the negative. It's always like, what would you change? What was the value of textbooks? You know, so, and what's a student gonna say? What's the value of textbooks? You mean the thing that school charged me like a hundred bucks for? Fucking nothing, right? Like it's, it's kind of weirdly written in a way that necessitates a negative response sometimes. I almost never had those. But all my evals were always like, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Mm. Part of that was laziness, okay? But again, I think a big part of it was just not understanding, and here's the, the part I'm gonna tell you that I wish I had known, how uh, awful some evals are. <laughs> um, again, we're talking about this class, but this is for all your classes. This is what I wish I had known. Teachers I really enjoy, classes I really dug, not even the ones I just made it through, but like I was like, man, that was, that was fucking great. I never said that to any of my teachers. And what I didn't know, think about it this way. If you've ever looked at online feedback for like a product or something, think about how that feedback usually goes. Think about most people who take the time out of their day to sit down and say what they think about a thing. What usually drives that behavior? It's usually anger or frustration, or some other dark side, you know, thing. Um, not always, but a lot of the time. And, and the point I'm making here is, by the way, some of you feel that way. Some of you feel that way about me. I look forward to your evaluation. Uh, but I don't think all of you do. And that was my position in, all, in most of my classes. And I just didn't realize how rough it gets sometimes. And if you're a teacher, and again, you could hate my guts, you'll let me know. Uh, but you might not hate all your teachers. It's worth letting them know, is all I'm saying. It really is. It really is. Um, for a couple reasons. One, we're people too. This is nice. But honestly, we do eventually look at the evals. We do take that into account. Does it totally shape how I'm going to do my class next time? No. But think about it like for a nice round number, if I happen to get 10 evals, okay, and seven of them are like, all the books suck. Well, I'm probably gonna look at changing some of that stuff, you know? Conversely, you know, if you were silent on the matter, but you had offered your input, if a couple people were like, ah, oh, I really dug this, or like, I didn't like the book that we read, because I know you guys didn't, but I felt like, Talking about it in class not only helped me understand it, but really helped me get into the conversation we were trying to, you see, you know, like anything like that, if you stick up for an assignment or something you feel like helps you out, 
that's beneficial to your teacher. Now all of a sudden, I'm, I'm, I'm probably gonna keep that. I might tweak it some, you know, but I'm, I'm gonna try to replicate some of the things that students felt like actually helped them as students. You gotta let your teachers know, whatever it is, because they don't otherwise, they really don't. I'll give you an example. The worst comment I ever got, I was teaching in Alabama, so it was a long time ago, uh, and a lot of those people were pricks. Uh, they just had money and they were 18, and you know, I don't even really blame them, they're monsters. Um, they insulted my wife, right? How's that for value of textbooks? Your wife sucks, like whatever it was they said. I know, I know, what a fucking monster. Um, that's the worst one I've ever gotten. But you will get, that's fair, but you will get variations on that, right? That, that feeling in that comment. Um, so again, I just say, I wish I had known that when I was a student. I had no idea. Um, all right, moving from evals, I got a couple closing remarks on the class, and then I'm gonna leave. You are free to do the eval or not, and then we'll reconvene for a brief thing and then we'll be done, okay? Comments on the class. All I really wanna say is, <clears throat> when I design a class, Honestly, my, my one guiding principle is I want to challenge you guys, and I'll say this, no matter what you may think about me or the class, I, I would wager you feel challenged. But I think it's a good thing. I honestly do. If you struggled occasionally, I think that's good for you. I do. But I also want to challenge you in terms of just thinking about things that we take for granted, right? If you can, cast your mind back to the beginning of the semester. So much of what we talked about with Fairchild, you know, why are these characters this way? Why is the speaker this way? You know, all that stuff. So many of your answers always came back to some version of, well, that's just, you know, how it is. That's what guys do. And it's like, I don't know if that's true. It's all social fabric, right? It's all, it's all a made thing. It's all built um, on very old ideas, but it's all built. And so I like to, to pick texts and form classes around trying our best to pick apart those things that probably, in a lot of ways, we just take for granted. We just assume it's that way because it's that way. That's not true, at least in my opinion. Now, ideally, what I would like you to do with that is to be able to take that mechanism of questioning two other texts, two other ideas, just in your life. That's why I build the class the way that I do. So you may not have dug the texts. You may not even have dug the class. There's different reasons for that. Some of them are valid, some of them aren't, by the way. But that's my aim, right? Whatever it was we did this semester, again, uh, sincerely, uh, to just, to, just to help you guys kind of figure out how to be better people, I think that's what college is supposed to be. It's picking shit apart, not taking it for granted. So, so that's what I was after. As I said, for one final time, I will remind you before I walk out the door, uh, evals are optional. You do not have to do them. You will sit here while other people do them, though. Um, I'd ask that you treat me as a person, but you're gonna actually just treat me however you're gonna always treat me, so that's funny. Uh, and then finally, when you're done, like as a class, please have somebody come get me, because I will just be sitting out there. It's boring. Appreciate it, guys. I mean, statistically speaking, for some of you, I appreciate it less because you're probably mean, but that's okay. All right. Last thing I want to do. This has gone well in the past. You guys seem particularly quiet today. I don't know. It must be the weather. Um, so I don't know how it's going to go. I also told my online class about it. They didn't take the bait, uh, which, I mean, if I'm being totally honest, I, you know, I kind of thought would be the case. I mean, they've never seen me outside of wherever they're watching this, so like kind of weird. Basically what I'm getting at is, I told you guys about this last week, most of you probably forgot. I've never promoted it like I have this semester. 
Uh, but the past couple of semesters, for some reason, the last day has ended up as a kind of AMA type of thing. Uh, I don't know why. I didn't it just it just happened. Um, and so now I thought, I was like, well, I'll try embracing it. See, basically what I'm saying is, if you guys for the next for the next little bit, anything at all you want to ask me, it could be about class, it could be about school. I I know a lot about those things. Um, hell, time I've been a student, a teacher, it's been it's been like 15 years. Good God. Anyway, um, it could be about other things. I know stuff about things, you know, whatever. I'm a dad, that's weird. A lot of you don't know anything about that. I got, I got stuff, man. So anything at all, anything at all you're curious about, go for it. Yeah. Is your wife's class like a level above this one? Or? What are you trying to say? No, um, um, no we generally teach, we, we both teach comp. Right. Yeah. I guess what I'm asking is, is her course kind of like this one too, or is it focused on something different? Okay. Uh, usually different. I'm trying to remember. I know she's just... <sighs> two things. One, my original answer. We both teach comp, but we actually have different uh, specializations. So, like when she went to school, it was for Victorian lit. So she gets more lit classes. I went to school for creative writing. I get more creative writing classes when we don't get comp. So like this semester, she's teaching some comp class, I'm not sure which one, and Brit Lit. So she'll have that stuff. They never give me that stuff, unfortunately, even though I'm qualified to teach it. Um, but when I get a class that's not comp, it's, it's like poetry and stuff. Um, Is it weird with your wife being technically one of your coworkers? No, it's great. We love each other. It'd be, yeah, well, I mean, it'd be weird if we didn't feel that way. <laughs> Which happens, again, statistically speaking, about half the time, unfortunately. Um, it's actually, let's go ahead and put this on camera. Uh, it's actually happened uh, uh, in our department where people who work together all of a sudden didn't like each other very much. And yeah, it was pretty fucking awkward. Um, Thank you. But uh, but yeah, no, we're cool with it. Uh, we, I mean, we, we, she's pointed out before we both understand each other's like gripes and or struggles very well, right? In a way that some, we don't even have to explain it very much. She sent me. Uh, she took a little uh, a picture of a sentence a student wrote. Uh, I can't remember it now, but it was ridiculous. Oh, it was at the end of a rough draft, and then student just said, "This is all I have. I couldn't brain up anymore." today and I was like brain up <laughs> and again like she, it, she didn't even send me it she just said this is from a rough draft you know she, yeah we, we had that we were like a little tee -hee. Um whereas if I had a different job or a different set of you know knowledge it may require more, expl more explanation and the best way to kill a joke is to explain it right so it's so yeah we, we share a lot as a result of that it also um, we have a similar schedule so like I know a lot of ways to help work around hers and vice versa. Like it's, it's just terribly fucking convenient. Uh, but that would be, that would not be the case if we didn't like each other very much. So check back in a couple of years, but right now, right now we're really good. She's, she's awesome. She's a smoke show too. Like I married up. <laughs> I did. I really did. Uh, if, you, if you see her walking around, I wouldn't be insulted if you agreed with me. She's smart, she's funny, she's hot. Yeah, I don't know. The thing, honestly, uh, Vonnegut wrote this in a different book. He never met a writer uh, who didn't end up marrying a, a pretty woman. And again, he's writing in the 60s, so like men generally just marry women. But the point is, you can like trick them with your words. If I ever see her, I'll give you a high five. Yeah. Sure, I would, I've earned it, I think. I really do. As long as she doesn't figure out, we're good. Sure enough. <laughs> anyway, other questions? That was good. Anything at all. Again, it could be about school. I know stuff. It could be about dragons. I know less. More serious. <laughs> Here and then here. How do you deal with Ah, okay. There's different kinds, obviously. And 
I can only assume if you're asking that question that you have either recently or are currently working through some, right? Okay. Do you smoke weed? Wow. Okay. That's a different question. Uh, no. <laughs> how fucking different that was. Really, uh. What was the first question? How do you deal with stresses? Those are the same questions, right. but they're very different. I didn't ask you. <laughs> well, no, honestly, and it was the speed bump in between. You, asked, you said you're going to ask an incriminating question. Right. What I thought you were saying was you were about to incriminate me in something. And again, like you're not, you didn't misuse the word, but I was like, what did I do? I was like, I don't, I don't do anything. Uh, no. <laughs> um, Have you ever? <laughs> no, yeah, I was 20 once, you know. I was in my 20s, so yeah, I did that stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure looking back, I was allergic. At least, at least, no, no, I'm serious. My allergies are terrible, and I'm pretty sure the smoke would really fuck with my. Uh, I also, I used to be in a couple bands because, like, I was cool. I was a singer. We would, we would, we'd be sometimes rehearsed in garages. Yeah, but not when I smoke weed. No, look at uh, all this stuff in here would swell up and start just like doing things that happen when if anybody has allergies, you know the playbook. And I never, probably because of the weed, put two and two together that like, it was, but all my buddies were like, let's do this and then do the plan thing. And I was like, something's wrong. Uh, what genre did you play? Huh? What genre, can you say, like grunge rock? You know, it's funny, uh, actually, no, I'll fully answer your question. Um, uh, one of the last times I played with, the last people I played with, a guy who was our lead guitarist, way more talented than the rest of us. We had a really good drummer, who I kind of brought into the fold. Drummers are hard to find. Uh, and a really, like, honestly, pretty kick-ass lead guitarist who could also back vocals. So, like, we I, we had a bassist that we were all friends with who did smoke a lot of weed and probably could have done less and been a lot better. Um, and I did, like, synthesizers and singing and, like, production stuff, uh, which is a way of saying I didn't really play anything. Um, anyway, uh, uh, he, in one of our last... I guess rehearsals together said, all right, man, that's enough of that Space Jam shit. And what, what you guys think that means is like LeBron James or Michael Jordan and Bugs Bunny. No, no. Space Jam, what he meant was like a very synth driven, uh, that's a keyboard that makes like whoop, whoop sounds, uh, very synth driven, very atmospheric, very full. Um, I was into that. He was, he, he wanted to play beach rock. <laughs> yeah. And we obviously didn't see eye to eye. Uh, on that. But at the time too, I mean, honestly, what really killed it was I was a student. I was in my bachelor's and I was working a job that didn't pay me anything. So I worked a lot and I just didn't really have the time. And I was trying to write poems a lot and trying to get better at that. And it was just like, this fucker wants to play beach rock. And I, yeah, so that just stopped. But I still got a guitar in the closet that I, I take out occasionally and my synths are downstairs. I got two synthesizers. That's two more than anybody needs. Um, I think drums make such a band. Yeah, no, everybody. You, if you're if you're a drummer, you will never go without a band. Everybody needs a drummer. I'm like terrible at those. Oh, well, you get better. But like my friends are like fucking monsters in instruments. Like watching right. me play with them was like a kid trying to wrestle his dad. It's really well, bad. <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes sometimes all you need is a really simple drum line. It doesn't have to be, you know. But uh, I actually look back a little bit wistfully. The drummer we had, even now, like I'm friends with him, we don't really talk because I'm married, but um, you don't have friends when you're married with kids. So anyway, um, he's really good. Like he's fucking good. But, uh, oh, last last year, Mother's Day, I made my wife a song, you know, because I can still like mix and, and I make beats. You know, the cool guy on your dorm floor who makes beats, you're like, that guy sucks. Yeah, I can do that. Um, to your original question, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do any of that. So what do you do? I drink tea. Yeah. Does your wife drink? No. We both stopped over the pandemic. We realized, first of all, you get older, it gets harder like to recover. It really does. Uh, 
but we also really it was just stupid like we felt like we were just didn't have enthusiasm when we, you know the next day and it's just stupid uh it sounds like you want your real question answered stress i mean yeah outlet's important i think for some people that weed when it ends up being a hobby i think it's half the weed that's stress relief and i honestly think the other half is like it's a hobby that they do like they'll hang out with people or they're t they'll talk you know and just have like that sense of community I think that's as powerful as the weed. And if you can manage to do it without it, maybe you see it's better. Um, but no, man, I, first of all, the, the, I think drugs are great. I mean, the, the big bummer is they're illegal. Like, that's the problem. But there's a lot of stories I'm not going to tell you, even though it's an AMA. Uh, I, I adventured a lot in my 20s. Um, but again, at the end of all that, man, I, I'm truly stressed in ways I don't think I ever could have been in my 20s because I have the family and the house and the job and like all that like real shit. Uh, I don't know, man. If I get stressed out, sometimes you got to take a break. You got to take a walk, you know, like literal or figurative. Um, getting outside, just catching your breath, especially with the boys, man. Whoa, fuck. They peed on each other again. On the slide again? My, my this time the four year old peed on his brother on his hands. Apparently, uh, and I didn't see it. I it reported to me afterwards. He was running through the backyard, peeing at his brother, but chasing him. And I guess he got him a little bit. I was really stressed about that. Um, <laughs> and I didn't deal with it maybe in the most mature way in the moment. But after the fact, I talked to him. You you just try. You need kind of perspective that you, it honestly is impossible to have when you're like 22 or however old you guys are. You don't. You haven't seen enough of the world, even though sometimes you feel like you, you haven't. Uh, as you age, if you try to keep in mind you're a small person dealing with big shit sometimes, the, the perspective helps. <coughs> and if occasionally it has to be other things that are illegal that I in no way can encourage, um, you just want to at the very least be smart about it, you know? In multiple ways, not just the fact that it's illegal, but also the fact sometimes you might be allergic and you don't realize it, or sometimes uh, certain things aren't good for you that maybe are good for other people, you know? Um, but yeah, just it, whatever it is, it'll pass. And again, I know that's cliche, it's true. It really is true. All the shitty things that have happened in my life, you know, you've been broken up with or something like that. I think about the girl I dated when I was 20 sometimes, like, I fucked around and Stayed with her. Woo! Good God, she sells hula hoops now. <laughs> that's not. That's not. Yeah, it's real. Yeah. And look, I'm not hating on anybody. You know, you love what you love, but that's not what I love. Um. So, yeah. Just, just all things that happen to you right now. They are big because they're right now. Years from now, the person you'll be, wherever you'll be, it will almost never matter. And just. Try to remind yourself of that uh, amid however else you deal with it, which we can't talk anymore about. <laughs> oh, yeah, you had a question. Yeah, so I'm kind of like stressed and like worried about how I'm going to pay for like next semester. Okay. Like, what did you do if you ever had to like for tuition? I'm currently in a whole lot of debt. <laughs> so I'll pay for it. Um, I mean, I, I got Pell and stuff like that eventually. It kind of sucked because I don't know. I don't know how much of it works now because things change over the years. But uh, when I went to school, you could technically be claimed on your parents' taxes until you were like twenty three or something, something like that. Um, and I believe my mother still did, which really fucked me. Because by the way, I moved out when I was in high school. Uh, the fact that she claimed me on her taxes is, looking back at it now, kind of messed up. Because uh, she was not supporting me, <laughs> but uh, I mean, she couldn't. Also, I'm not fault, but but the fact that she would then claim me on her taxes would royally screw me uh, in terms of help that I desperately needed. Um, but no, I mean, you you, you want to look to all options you can have. An advisor would be good to talk to because I don't know about those things. I know Pell is still a thing, um, and there's other kinds of scholarships, even the shitty ones, like things that you look at and you're like, there's no way I could do that. A lot of times the requirements are super minimal. <clears throat> like it's like write an essay, but if any of you have ever done that, how long are those essays? 500 words? 
something like that. That's not an essay. That's a paragraph, right? So like, there, there's, there's things you could do uh, in that vein. <clears throat> Apart from that, I had a job. I mentioned that. Man, I actually, I found my, an old W-2 the other day cleaning out uh, our garage. I made, I think, $12,000 one year at that job. That's not a lot. McDonald's isn't really making the cut at the moment. Yeah, but I mean, but it's all like the point I'm making to you is it's all drops in the bucket and it will feel that way, but you need all those drops. So you got to explore all of it. The job is one legit, have a meeting with an advisor. And if you can't get one, then go find another advisor. Like you, you can get a meeting with these people. They can help. You can talk to uh, financial aid. That's their whole jam. Um, at the end of all that, the job and everything else, I did take out loans. There's, I, that's how I ate. I also stole. I'm not telling you to do that, but uh, uh, I, I lived in a place at one point that was really rough. And uh, we all, all of us, there was like eight or nine dudes living in this really shitty, we were squatting. Anyway, um, we, we stole food. We stole all kinds of stuff to live uh I'm not telling you, i'm not telling you to do that uh because you get a lot of trouble but they, apart from that there's things you can do ways you can do it uh how much is tuition here even now i don't know do you guys know you should know it's like five six. five or six that is a lot damn that's not nearly as much as some other places but uh i, I want to say when i went here it was closer to three but again, that was a long time ago. Um, but yeah, I, I would say the job, uh, Pell Grant where you can, um, and just talk to an advisor, man. There's all kinds of, for some reason, uh, opportunities they don't tell anybody about, right? You gotta go seek them out. Um, I would do any and all of that. I will say this too, for anyone else who, who has a similar concern or just, if you leave school, it happens sometimes. You gotta leave for a semester or whatever, it happens. It's so much harder to come back. It really is. Um, which is why I did, I took three years off between high school and college, but like once I was in, I stayed in. And as soon as we left at the end of our second, no sorry, third degree is my wife and I, um, I knew we weren't coming back. Like everybody was like, okay, you know, you can still try to blah, 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 and then maybe later on submit. And I was like, uh, in the moment, you're like, oh yeah, sure. But in my head, I'm like, we're not coming back. I'm gonna go get a full-time job, raise a child. Like we're not going back to school. It doesn't happen. So I would just, you know, if, if it matters to you, you gotta keep that in mind as well. But yeah, the short answer to your question is I, I'm in a lot of debt. Other questions? That was a bummer. Yes? Sorry, has there ever been a time when you wanted to quit teaching? Fuck yeah. Yeah. What time is it? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, I'd say mostly recently, but I'm sure it's happened all the time. but I'm sure it's happened all the time. Uh, my real gripe now is the writing center and and it's really more a symptom the writing center isn't the problem but there's over the past couple years there's been a real issue with uh, students not understanding what school is supposed to be like and i'll use the writing center as an example i'll get these are grad students normally who i deal with because <clears throat> well, there's all kinds of reasons it don't matter but i see a lot of grad students and all they're really interested in is like can you check the formatting on my paper can you line edit and, and they're done? And it's like, no, the point of the writing center is I'm, I'll talk to you about your paper and try to help you get better and figure things out. They're like, no, 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 I just want you to edit it. It's like, oh, you have to pay somebody for that. What you're looking for is a service. This is about learning. And I, I honestly think over the past couple of years, it's always been a problem, but over the past couple of years, it's for some reason really been an issue where I'll get students who think, they're just here for me to like sign off on whatever, like on their work and we're good. It's like, no, we're, you're here for a semester. I'm trying to teach you stuff. No, I'm not here for that. Well, it's like, that's not, what do you, this is school. You think this is school, right? Now I'm here for a job. You gotta learn to get that, nah, nah, nah. So yes, 
Uh, but then also the question is like, what would I do otherwise? I don't know. I don't have a lot of skills. I was out there, honestly, I forgot books. I forgot everything. So I started working on a sonnet in my head. That's not super marketable, uh, unfortunately. I guess I'll feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I could do that. Um, <laughs> Wonder how much, how long it would take to save, uh, save up for a gun and a bullet? Uh, <laughs> and bullet. Um, dark humor. Anyway, um, yes, but but I will say too, I do enjoy teaching actually quite a bit, and I don't think I would ever quit. I mean, I let, you know, shit like some real shit went down, but yeah, like in terms of just dumbass people you got to deal with, it gets irksome. Um, but generally speaking, uh, I, I had a professor tell us once, you know, you, you would teach for free, you pay to, uh, to grade, and that's pretty accurate. Like right now, I'm chewing through all your papers, and it's just soul murder of having to look at all those papers. But actually coming in here and talking about stuff, and, and hearing you guys have ideas, and trying to explain them, and like actually figure, like I see you guys figure shit out sometimes, like on the fly. Yeah, I would do that all day. Yeah, for sure. Yes? So what like motivates you whenever you're in like a slump like that? My family, my boys. Yeah, like uh, that doesn't really help you guys, but um, yeah, like uh, you know, you hear the cliche, I would die for my kids. Fuck that, I would kill for my kids. I would, I would. Like uh, I would if it if it somehow took like a crazy saw scenario, you gotta stab these ten people to say, I like, well they're fucking dying. And I wouldn't even feel bad. Like, the part of movies where guys are like, I can't do it. I would feel not guilt. <laughs> Whatever it was, it wouldn't be guilt. I mean, I'd be sad for those people. But, mm, yeah, so my family all the time. I mean, even like this this morning, man. I, I woke up at 6. My son come, came, in, come in. Came in? Fuck me. And he was like, Dad, is it wake up time? I want breakfast. I'm like, all right, man. And then just... It literally gets me up in the morning um, to do those things. And then there's smaller things. There's poems, just because that's my, my, my thing. I'm working on two poems right now. You know, uh, I got a mentor, I guess, who works here, and she's awesome. She keeps pushing me to publish, so I'm sending stuff off now. I don't usually do that because I hate it. Um, but all that really comes back to, you know, who do, who do I want my kids to look up to? Because, God, they look up to me. It's weird. Uh, and I, I want to be somebody I want them to be. So, yeah, all the time. I'm, I'm doing stuff for my kids. Like, literally, but also figuratively. Um, it's crazy, man. How about when you were a student, when you were trying to find motivation for stuff like that? Uh, I was actually pretty self-motivated. Um, and again, we all deal with different demons, self-doubt, all that stuff. To me, man, and again, I think I was partly helped in a couple ways by like the three years I took off between high school and college. Like I was more mature in some ways, but I was also not because when I was 21, you're not fucking mature when you're 21, you're an idiot. Um, and I was, but um, I don't know. I think what helped me tremendously was when I came to college, because I kind of got, I was at this crossroads. I was an assistant manager at GameStop. And they kept after me. They're like, why don't you want a store? Why don't you want a store? There's more money. There's more hours. But like, you know, um, I knew, because I've been like an assistant manager for long enough, I knew if I took a store, that was going to be my life. You know, like I knew I'd be some manager guy, maybe in this GameStop. You guys would see me, you know, if you come by. But like, do you want to reserve a minute? And I didn't want that. I didn't want that. So I quit. And I uh, got a dishwasher job at a restaurant, which paid way less. Um, and I did that, and I went to school. Uh, and I think having to consciously make that decision, as opposed to what many of you, unfortunately, are probably working through right now, which is like, well, why are you in school? Like, Fuck mm -hmm. you, mom. Lazy. It's, like that, it's hard to get motivated when like your parents or the world, or whatever, is just like, that's what you do now. It's, it's hard to be self-motivated, right? For me, it was, if I don't, first of all, I burned the life that I had to do it, 
And it's like, if I don't make this work, then what do I have now? Cause now I'm a dishwasher. Um, so it was that, uh, but, but yeah, I wanted to do it. I wanted to go to school. Like when I signed up for school, I've mentioned to you guys before, I signed up as an English major. I signed up as a creative writing minor. I was writing stories and poems and stuff before I ever enrolled in school. I was into the shit. And then I went and found out how to like study it. And again, it's harder to do when you're 18. Cause like, what are you, I'm into TikTok. And it's like, all right, well, good fucking luck with a major, you know, but if you can find a way, any way to try to dig into what you think you actually care about, I think that's a way to be motivated. And it's turned into my kids because again, they trump fucking everything else. But before that, I mean, I gave a shit about stuff and it's just doing your best to follow that. What time is it now? I see somebody getting antsy. 1230. Okay, we're almost done. Any other questions anybody would care to ask? These are good questions. If you ever did a journaling, think you would be a journaling? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, likeliest scenario. <sighs> you trying to get me in trouble. Um, I guess it'd be, it'd be one of two things. It would be breaking a law I don't agree with. Cause there's some of those, you know, um, well for instance, I mean, we mentioned drugs. I don't do them, but I also think it's pretty silly that they're illegal. Like all of them, honestly, I understand to a point why some of them are, but a lot of it is just like, if you're an adult and you're not going to drive, that's different. If you're just hanging out at your house, do what the fuck you want. Like I, I think it's kind of stupid for that to be illegal. Um, but again, I don't really do any of that anymore. I haven't done it in a very long time. Uh, I guess I could potentially go to jail for road rage. I've gotten a lot better over the years, but I, I do occasionally have like a, a relapse, minor confrontations, relapse. Yeah, my go-to. I don't think I've told you guys this. For whatever reason, if you really piss me off in traffic, you won't hear it because the windows are up. But I will call you a goofy bitch goofy bitch like when somebody's I just can't stand nobody knows how to drive like if you've ever been out walking around and you're like what's wrong with people like people don't know how to walk well now just imagine they're in a car you know it's the same thing I can't I can't stand it I can't stand it so it might be road rage I can't think of anything else you go to jail for that? huh well I don't think I would go to jail for anything but you asked like in the life that I lead, I don't do a lot. Like I will leave here and go home. Normally I would work out, but again, I'm still getting over, so like no. But I might do some stuff around the house. I'll go pick up my boys around three or whatever, two thirty, three o'clock, and then I'll bring them home. And then that's my life until nine when they go to bed. And then I go to bed and then I get up in the morning and I do it all again. So there's not a lot of what would I do? I mean, if I, if I ran like uh, an extortion scheme or something, like I, I just don't even have the time, you know? Sorry, I feel like you were looking for something there. There's just, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of legal opportunity, I guess, in my life, uh, unfortunately. But you are trying to get me in trouble. It's very interesting <clears throat> strategy here. Any other questions? Anything at all? Okay. Sure, it'll be the last one. Sure. Stupid fucking bullshit question. Okay. Just dumb. <laughs> For sure. So if you had like a million dollars, what would you do with it? Pay off the house, pay off my debt, it could easily cover that. Uh, trust funds for my boys, or like some kind of, you know, investment thing that would like hopefully grow in some way. Uh, I'd buy a, a sensible car. Cause we're getting to where we need a second one, so like a Civic or something. And then, uh, uh, that'd probably be it. I'd probably go to work the next day because a million dollars won't get you through everything. That'd be it. I have very low. I know. I don't. I'm not that guy. Even if I if like, if I was, uh, however old I am, with no kids and no wife, and you give me a million dollars, I'd still just be like, yeah, just pay off stuff and chill. And yeah, you'd go to work, but like, would you want to buy something? 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll go crazy easy, but also like, uh, what would I really want? I hate traveling. I know, I know, and I have, I mean, I'm not trying to like show off, but like I got an Xbox, PlayStation, Switch. PS2 was pretty high. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, I'm a man of very like low key pleasures, so I'm, I'm not. So like minimalistic for that? Yeah, yeah, when my wife found me, she likes to describe it as I had like a bear bulb, which is true. Uh, I had a table with one chair and a cat, and I was like, it. I had a bed on the floor. That was like it. Who's your favorite cat? My favorite cat? Don't you have five? Yeah, my favorite cat is dead. Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> right. it's, it's the picture on Gmail. That's uh, Major Tom. He died last year? Yeah, after, after Bowie. Yeah. Major Tom. Yeah, I've had him. I've had him since I was 21. So I had him for a long time. And uh, yeah, he died. Yeah, okay. He's my, it's okay. He's my favorite cat. I love him a lot, actually. Uh, but uh, yeah, the cats we have now, most of them are dicks. We got one named Mr. Nibbles. He's very cute, very sweet. Sweetest cat you've ever met. Uh, I guess him. Him or Nico. But we have two new ones. I don't give a shit about them. Huh? You named the cat Mr. Nibbles? Yeah, William Nibbles. Because I'm an idiot. He had a cat named Chauncey Von Snuffles. So okay. Yeah, I never had one of those. But, uh, all right, so you guys are getting ready to go. It must be that time. I wish you well. Whatever you got going on through the semester, we're at the end of it. Finish up. Yes. Did there going to be revisions for the final paper? No. You know, we just don't have time. Yeah. But uh, I try. I do try to keep that. Most teachers you have will try to keep that in mind <clears throat> when they grade the final draft of the final paper. Uh, but yeah, no time. Take care. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Be well.